All right, are we ready to start this meeting? At least be on 7.30. All right, everybody rise for I just I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic oh, the, for which it stands, oh, one nation stand. under God. One nation under God, visible liberty and justice, and justice for all. Yeah. All right. All right. Why don't you uh, say your eyes if you're here? Randy Hackett here. Here. Uh, Ross Gerrads. Here. Mary Lane. Here. Noel Gerard. Here. Mark Petra. Here. Here we are. All right. Uh, looking for approval of agenda. Um, Randy, if we can add one more piece, it's up to the group, obviously. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, please. Good, thank you. Anyway, um, as we take a look, I want you all to know that David Lem, uh, we didn't want to negotiate here this until we got the three unions done. We got the three unions done, and then uh, COVID-19 struck, and he has been running his tail off ever since. Finally, he came and talked to me late last week and said, can I finish my contract? He has almost worked a year without a full contract. And I did put uh, everything that you wanted at the back. You can see what he asked for. Um, as far as open meeting law goes, this is a special meeting. And uh, you have to give three days notice of where the items we're going to discuss on a special meeting. Typically it's for a special meeting is called to discuss an item, which is what we do last time, is have a special meeting for one particular subject. Um, I noticed there's at least two additional subjects that weren't listed in the newspaper and we didn't find out ourselves until two days ago. The standard is three days notice. Just so we're on the up and up with this open meeting law. John, you're on mute. Uh, no, that's fine. If we don't want to discuss it at all, we don't have to take action on it at all, if you don't want it. But the key is you've got that piece. David will wait till the next meeting, but I wanted you people to see it. And so at least you have it there. And I'm not sure what you're talking about the second part. Both parts were in there, in the paper. Yeah, I think when we decided to have a special meeting, we had already voted on the 
non-hire of the assistant coaches that were on that list. And the reason for the special meeting was to decide how much to pay the coaches that were already hired. Is that correct? That's what you said at the meeting. That is correct. But I added the second item on there out of necessity. These four people that are on your list all worked. By Gatsby, the new Gatsby rules, if they work, we have to pay them. They worked. And by that, it would be called wage theft if we didn't. That's why they're on there. Okay. Um, yeah, we want to be fair to the employees that worked. If we could see their logs, then we could have an idea of what to pay them. The logs. So, so the it's logs. Sort of, I mean, we're just trying to approve the agenda, right? Correct. So, so maybe let's look at the agenda and then go to this discussion, which I think we're getting into, right? So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda, um, but I, I don't think I want to add the amendment for the administrator contractor. Um, I would, it's nice to have it, and I definitely think it should be on our next meeting, but I would approve only the discussion on the position and salaries, if I can do that. I'll second that. All right, I'm back now. Lee Holm, I'd like to second Russ's motion. Okay, so there's a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented or amended? Presented. A presented. We're not going to amend it with the network administrator contract. Okay. Okay. It was moved by director. Oh, is there discussion? It was moved by Director Garrett and seconded by Director Holm to approve the agenda as presented. You will vote by saying aye for the motion and nay or whatever against the motion. No. Randy Hackett, aye. Ellie Holm. Aye. Russ Garrett. Aye. Mary Lane. Aye. Noel Gerard. Aye. Mark Petron. Aye. Motion carries six zero zero. Okay. Moving on to discussion and information. Athletics positions and salaries. Um, in front of them, everybody should have the stuff that was pushed out to us through from the administration. Um, John, would you like to speak to these and explain them? John, you're muted. Actually, the person that should explain them is uh, Tony. Tony's the one that uh, needs to explain. He knows them far better, but anything that most of the things you see on there were requested by board members. For example, the percentages that other schools are working, how much money other schools work. There was some concern by a board member that uh, some schools, of course, accepted everything because they were less than, uh, you know, they only paid $1,000 for somebody, let's say, rather than a $5,000 bill. But what uh, Tony did on a moment's notice, he put everything together and you can see what uh, the range is for each one. Some of them don't have a range, because the people have been there for a certain amount of time and that's all he got from them. Like ours is ranged based upon where they are in the salary schedule. So I, I guess I'll kick it off for discussion unless if Tony wants to walk through but one of the things that I was thinking I was also going to see is like prom 
or yearbook or I, I, I'm guessing there's other things that I don't know about. Are what's are they not included or they are? They are not included because all those have all but a little bit is completed. The major part of prom, for example, the prom was all but attended. Everything was done except the attendance, um, which is we didn't pay the people that were supposed to chaperone because there were more than one chaperone. Um, same way with the play. The only thing that was missing was the performance for two nights, uh, uh, two of performances. Everything was completed for the play. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, Knowledge Bowl, completed. Student Council, completed. You go through everything is there within you know, a day or two, max. Good question. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback Russ off of um, John's comment. Most of the advisor positions are year long positions or school year long positions. So they are coming hours from the beginning of the school year through the end of the year. Um, so that's why they're not included in that spring sports or activity list because anything that usually says advisor is an annual participation. Well, I'll take the floor here because I've been all over the board on this. And I just wanted to hear what everybody else thought about it. So. I've been talking to other schools, people in some other schools, and I've heard everything from prorated to full pay, 50% pay. Um, been talking to people, and my only question is, is there is something to be said that if somebody said they were gonna do this job, they didn't apply for something else, so they took it. I don't know, you know, I, I don't know what that means. I I just want to hear what everybody else has to say about it. Randy, can I say something? Go ahead, Ellie. Okay, so I've had, and I understand where you're coming from talking to the other schools in this spreadsheet that Tony gave us is awesome. Um, I've been talking to more community members and citizens and parents and everything and kind of asking them, you know, what was done, what their kids, you know, were involved in prior to the cancellation of the season. Um, definitely taxpayers, you know, they've reached out to me. I haven't really reached out to them. I was more parent student reaching out. Um, and when I go through, you know, the list of duties and then I think on the email we had gotten just the um, like coaching, you know, how many days were started before the season. Um, I believe there was some pitcher catcher practice for the baseball. Um, I think maybe one week of practice with the whole team. I do get a little confused on the distant coaching days and maybe Tony can add in on that when he speaks to it, um, what, you know, what was entailed in those days. I just have, I think if we start looking at who was affected by a season not happening, um, I had transportation, you know, they rely on those days and uh, extra trips and, you know, that extra money that they get out of the seasons too and they're out of it. I just don't, I don't want to open a can of worms. And I guess as far as how I feel personally about it, if it was me doing it, I don't know. I just talking to everybody, I have a hard time when you didn't have a season. I, I understand there's things you prepare. Every person prepares for a job. Um, I prepare for a job. I don't get paid for preparing for that job. I understand that there's, you know, a lot of planning. But when I look at like, say, you know, we use past practice 
and they get paid or whatever. This is just such an unnormal situation that I, I know I'll wind it up. I guess the taxpayers, parents, and community members I've talked to really have a hard time grasping why we would be paying for a season that wasn't played. Go ahead, John. Yeah, what I wanted to say with this is what few people understand um, is, yeah, the practices, the regular practices were called off. Part two, though, uh, the Minnesota State High School League said, keep practicing, but you can't do it physically. It's an online, it's a distance practice. And there were a number of things that were required of coaches to do. They could not force any kid to do anything, but they were supposed to keep a log of everything. Tony can tell you in a minute when I'm done or whoever's got other questions so Tony can answer it. They stayed on until the day, and matter of fact, the day before the governor said, that's it. Minnesota State High School League then said it was it. There was belief, and Tony, you, you can back me up on this, Tony was talking about, no, no, they think they're going to be playing games. They think they're going to, they're not quite sure how, but they think they're going to play games. Maybe it's just a tournament format, you know. The problem came with some other games like track. So I don't know if somebody else has got, but what uh, we did is we sat down and I put down uh, recommendations that we had sitting down talking with Tony, talking with Don and myself, suggestions uh, based on that. And these are our recommendations, if you notice the sheet I put in there, but we couldn't meet until we had all the data collected. Mary. No, did you have something to add? No. Yes, sir. Uh, Mary, I'm sorry. I, I Go ahead, Mary. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with Ellie. I, too, have contacted a number of people. Uh, both coaches in other districts and soups and some of the people that I've known over the years. I believe that if you do the work, you get paid. I don't care. Well, this is an extremely unique situation. And here is where we have to refer to our AD and ask him what his opinion is. What do we do in these types of circumstances? I've got an unstable deal. So Tony, I'd leave it up to you, I guess, because I, I, I would not know how to equate how people work. Thank you. Go ahead, Noel. Um, yeah, I'd, uh, to be fair to our our coaches, I want to pay people for the work they did, but to be fair to our taxpayers, I don't want to pay people for work they didn't do. And keep in mind, whatever we do, the six of us tonight is going to set the precedent and that will be the past practice. So if we're fair to everybody, then it should be a good past practice. If we do something silly, it's going to be past practice just as much. And I would like to see those logs. I heard there was mentioned um, several times that um, there were logs, but I don't think the board has seen any of them, have you? John? Yeah, I agree with Noel with the first part that he talked about is we will be setting precedent and that's something that we considered when we set this all up. Uh, let's say for some reason we don't have a fall season at all. Uh, depends when it's called what has been done to set it up. Or let's say in a winter season we don't have that at all. Uh, whatever we do, we do set up. Uh, as for seeing the logs, in other words, you're saying you don't trust one of our administrators, Tony, that uh, he has done logs or that he has looked at logs. And I would remind you that part of this is about micromanaging. Um, 
you know, if Tony wants to show you logs, I'm not sure how much you'd have to redock. I'd have to take a look at that. I have a conversation with a lawyer tomorrow, so it would be nothing to ask him to do that. But uh, he could maybe tell you how many pages he had right now. Um, I don't know what, how much, uh, I'm sure that different coaches put down different things in the logs and that's part of our concern. Mark, do you have something to add? Yes, I uh, talked to a, quite a few community people about this. This has been a pretty hot topic out there. And I haven't found one community person to say that the coach should get paid for more than one week, the week that they worked. And so there's a lot of preparation that's done in every job that doesn't get paid for. And so, and I, I talked to, actually talked to the soccer coach that's been a soccer coach the last three years. And that person said, no, I absolutely wouldn't expect to get paid for coaching soccer this summer. And I talked to a couple of the winter and fall coaches, and they absolutely said they wouldn't expect to get paid if they didn't coach. So I'm having a hard time with this 75% on a softball coach versus softball. Well, coach, well, I have a daughter that played softball, and I, I have a hard time believing that she did seventy-five percent of her work that she would normally do. So, I, if somebody would make a motion for one week, I would vote for it. That's all I have. Can I say something, Randy? Go ahead, Ellie. Um, as far as the comment John made on us not trusting employees, I don't think that's it. I do think what we're trying to do is be fair to the coaches who've worked um, and figure out what we can do best for them. Um, comments like that just irritate me. So I just, I want to be clear that I think we're trying to figure out, this is a tough situation in general with the school and distance learning and coaching and everything. I don't think we need to add in, you know, extra drama. And, you know, if we work as a team to figure out what's best, I think that works best. Um. I guess I would like to know what, what is the proposal from the administration to do with this? Can you hear me? We can. Okay, thank you. Um, I still think we have to acquiesce to the AB to find out what his recommendations are. I also feel, again, we should always pay our employees. But he would be the only one who knows exactly what they've been doing. I don't pretend to manage those areas. That is his job. So I really feel we should let people do their jobs that have them. He does a very good job. We, we certainly trust our employees and certainly our AP. But thank you. Go ahead, John. Yeah, if you got this sheet. Yep. In there, at the bottom, there were recommendations that Tony worked out that Dawn and I looked at as a team. And these were our recommendations. You, as a board, decide if you wanna accept those or change those. That's entirely up to you. That's what we do, is give you the recommendation. So this, this sheet is your recommendation then? Correct, at the bottom. That was after okay. today, and we compared it to what other school districts are doing also. Yep. Um, you can also see that in some of them, they required logs had to be taken and everything else, and that's what happened. 
Um, that was based on them continuing to do that work outside. And like I said, there, there's somebody that was dropped off the list that made no contacts and did not start practice. Okay. Tony's got his hand up. Unmute Tony. Oh, Tony, go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. So um, we can dissect some of uh, some of of everything that's going on. Um, so when when I went through and, and looked at the, at the at the numbers for what I what I recommended, um, you know, I, I took a look at the breakdown of of what a head coach is required to do and a, a head assistant JV C squad coach and then what a junior high coach is and the, the bulk of the effort of, of a coach of a head coach is in the preseason postseason duties um, and administrative so once the season gets going that's kind of actually a breath of fresh air to be able to relax and and just coach your season uh, moving down into the assistants, you, you spend the bulk of your time during the season. You might have some administrative duties or preseason, postseason stuff that's delegated from the head coach, but by and large, most of your stuff is, is within those parameters. For junior high, you kind of almost run your own mini program because the high school coaches may have given you direction beforehand on what they like to work on, but then moving into the season, you get to you create your own practice planning you are in charge of those kids so um it, it's kind of a little bit more on the preseason postseason stuff and 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 less um um more seasonal duties so when i when i took a look at that and then i, I did get those logs from from my my coaches um i, I then formulated that that uh, matrix for you that that uh, where it kind of breaks down um, I, I did the percentages. It said per, percentage of com season complete at the time of cancellation. Um, I did that for, for a proration standpoint. And I, let me tell you how, 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 let me explain how I got to that number. Um, we started softball practice on March 10th. Same thing with track. That week, we didn't have school on Monday, so we started on Tuesday. So we had four solid days of practice before we were uh, essentially cut off. Uh, baseball had optional days of arm conditioning that they have. It's an additional week. So they went Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of that week, and they gave them Friday off again before we were cut off. What the high school league decided was to continue their um, bylaws and their seasons. So the, the, the official communication from them verbatim says, Spring sports are officially in season, therefore all league rules, policies, and bylaws surrounding participation are in effect. So they are essentially still under that spring coach's control. There were specific parameters that they laid out about requiring what you can and cannot do for a coach and for a participant. And they, we were directed or and asked by the high school league to continue to stay in contact. Uh, posting optional workouts. One of the things that the kids couldn't do is they couldn't give us workouts back. We couldn't say, well, you, you could say, um, uh, Mark, so where I freeze Macy as an example. Um, Macy, I want you to go out and hit off a tee 100 times today. Now, Macy couldn't video her to Coach Godfordson, but she could say, hey, individually, you can do that skill workout. Um, tomorrow we're going to work on getting under the ball from a pop fly, whatever the case may be. You can, you, they could have done that. Um, so they use a, a variety of methods to accomplish that, whether it was through email, the school communications, uh, through remind, through text, phone calls. And as this kind of progressed, as the high school league never gave us an indication that the season was going to be over, they continued to tell us to prepare. And they make contingency plan. What what's going to happen? Should we come back uh, when the when the governor allows us to come back on May fourth? What would a shortened season look like? So they had all these these um, scenarios played out, and then that Thursday morning when we had our high school league ads lead meeting, uh, they were talking just that. Do we have a shortened postseason? Longer regular season? 
Do we, do we have a, a combination state tournament, longer, same, and less regular season? Those are all the conversations that were still happening. Um, and it wasn't until that afternoon when we were told that our seasons were officially canceled. Um, at that point, they, the high school league then went into off-season mode, and they said all sports seasons are out of season. So that restricted the type of communication that we could have with our athletes. Um, about a week later, five days later, they went back and went backwards a little bit and allowed spring coaches to continue to have contact again. Um, they allowed coaches to have exit meetings, to, to wrap up the season. Um, and all throughout this process, the, the mental side of things what was a pretty big push for me uh, to the coaches to connect, to talk, to, to reach out, to, to, to kind of get the pulse of the team. Um, who's struggling, who's been in contact, those, those types of things with those kids. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the rundown of, of how the high school league has, um, uh, how they operated throughout this process. Um, it was earlier April when I had a, a Zoom meeting with my coaches um, and, I, and I asked them to create logs of what they've done, what, where's their, their contact, what have they done to, uh, during this distance coaching period as they called it. And, and they do have um, logs for those things, um, professional development things, first aid and CPR training, uh, could be do book studies for professional development, could be creating optional workouts, posting videos, communicate with athletes. All of those variety of things is, is what people can do. Um, so that, that's kind of the, the contact that, that they had. But again, we, we couldn't mandate them um, to get together and go play catch for an hour. We can't mandate them to send videos of us, even though they may want that instruction and crave that instruction of, what am I doing wrong with this? How can I fix my technique? We couldn't give that to them because they can't accept that video. So it had to go a different direction in the distance coaching in making sure that um, you, you were working on the, the mental side of things um, while continuing to prepare should there have been a season. So Tony, I have one question. Was there a mandate from the governor on what we're supposed to do with this? I mean, he's the one that closed the season. So I would expect there should have been some, some. All, all of it is local control. Um, so what, what people, that was true, we'd probably still have a season. <laughs> I, I, I would, I would agree with you. Um, but yeah, so, so that decision to pay was not, was not handed down. I did have a message from, I reached out to Nadine Schrader um, about this. Uh, she's a, the AD at, at Soccer Rapids Rice. And uh, she had told me that there were some concerns. And from the state's standpoint, if they had completed the directives of the athletic department um, and documented, they would, they would still get that funding for that, is what, is what, is what she, had, she had given me. It wasn't a long paragraph of, of information, but um, that, that's kind of why there's a lot, there's a, there's a bunch of different things um, that are different. Like BBE went 50% um, across the board for everybody. Um, diff different schools mandate different things. Um, I, I followed the model from John Vera. He was the AD, he's the AD at New London. I got that information from Justin Brown, who's at Litchfield, who's a friend of mine. So he, he forwarded that on to me um, early, very early on in this process. And that's kind of a framework that I use. But other, other schools did different things. Um, some are more simple tasks, just facilities management or inventory, um, down to uh, book studies and more involved, I guess, processes for, for athletics. OK. Does anybody else have questions? Go ahead, Noel. Yeah, that's why uh, I was wanting to see the logs because um, apparently the logs would show that some coaches did 75% and you know some did as low as like 30%. 
Um, I just was kind of wanting to see the raw data on how you came up with these recommendations. Um, <clears throat> I, I looked. I looked at the, the the things that they did and just kind of make a made a, a judgment call. Um, you're, some people are much more, much more efficient because they've been in the game as a head coach for ten years, where others, perhaps for our, our track head coaches and and Coach Godfordson for softball, they spend more time because at some times they're 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 doing it for the first time. So some may be more efficient in different areas than others, and that, that may weight differently for some people than others. Go ahead, Don. Thanks. Um, with what Tony is saying with the logs, generally those logs, they are, we do have data privacy as, as far as any public employer and private employer. And we do defer to the to the director with the logs. We don't put them out as public. I'm hoping everybody's being honest and um, giving Tony good logs. Um, that's just like any coaching. We do ask for logs and calendars for unemployment um, when we have to report hours, um, and that does go to our unemployment. So we normally do ask for all their coaching logs and preparation logs, but that goes into an unemployment file and their personnel file every year. So um, just I just wanted to bring that point up um, with, the, with the logs. We do have them, but we don't usually make those public. Okay, um, good answer. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm just having, um, on this one sheet you gave us with the, uh, percent of the season that is preseason is 40% and then the seasonal duties is 50% and then the administrative duties is 10%. So there was no actual seasonal like there was no games. So I'm kind of thinking the most that could have happened would have been 50%, you know, all the preseason stuff and the administrative duties, that adds up to 50%. And I get, you know, some of them may not have done that, but that, to me, that looks like that would be the maximum of it. Yes, you're right. I, I, I don't have that specific item. It's not an exhaustive list. I, I, um, I must have overlooked that one. I, I mean, I had lineups. Um, not not all of those things you know are done um I, I i objectively tried to look at what feasibly should have been done and what is done um for those different categories and uh and made a judgment call from there okay is there anybody else that want has a question for tony or any uh, any other comments All right, we're going to move on from discussion to action items. Um, we struck the, the action item on the contract. So um, right now we're looking for the spring salaries for a motion. Mr. Chair, I just have a question on the action items that uh, there's <laughs> two action items that seem to say the same, same exact thing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think that that first one is supposed to be hires, but I, I'm not sure on that one. I thought I seen that as hires at one time because we have other hires, right? Or are we, are we just not doing them? Well, I don't know. It seems like they're trying to combine the hires that were voted down last meeting into this motion here, which really, according to parliamentary procedure, someone who voted no on the last meeting to hire those people would have to make a motion to reconsider. Um, that's 
that's the actual parliamentary procedure for that. This is kind of shaky where you're trying to combine it into another action item. Don, do you have some clarity on this? Um, yes. <laughs> the reason that is back on there, and I do agree with Noel, somebody does have to say no. Where we're coming into some sticky ground is these, these coaches already performed duty. So by law, we are required to pay them. So we, otherwise it is considered wage, wage theft. If you do work and you don't get compensated for it, they can report us to the federal or state government and then we are on the hook for wage theft. So um, I guess I, I was sorry if I wasn't paying attention last meeting and didn't notice that they were voted no. Um, but I, like I said, I didn't know if some of these coaches were working. However, once they become workable, we have to, we have to pay these people. So I, I guess the, I don't know how we're going to pay these people without approving them as a coach. So that's, I guess, something the board would need to discuss because once you've done work and we have log of it, we're obligated by law to pay them. Okay. That's the sticky point. Um, um, I'll take Ellie first. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so referring to what Don said on if they're workable and have worked, we have to pay them. My question is why are we having a special meeting on if we're paying them? If they have logs that they've filled out for Tony and that they've done work, if we're gonna get ourselves in trouble for wage theft, of telling them they're not being paid, this is where I get confused. Why then is the board involved in this decision of not paying them? Don, can you enlighten us? <laughs> yes. Uh, the decision comes if they hadn't worked. Um, I, I didn't know if every coach had worked or not. If they hadn't performed any duties, we're not obligated to pay them. If they performed coaching duties, and apparently I didn't know this before I had talked to Tony, that Tony had them preparing and doing coaching duties. Um, at that point, they are, they are now pay, viable to pay because they have performed services for the district. Had they not done any services for the district? Um, and that's where we could come into a situation in the fall. That's when it's really important that the board you know, sets a precedent that's a good precedent, like Noel had said, because what if we come into fall and nobody's done anything? We're not obligated to pay them necessarily for their coaching because they haven't performed any work. However, the four coaches you mentioned, or five, oh, I'm not sure how many, they have performed coaching duties. So the question now really isn't how, if we should pay them or not, it should really be how much services they've, they've earned because we do we do have to follow federal law on that so I think that the conversation was I didn't know how many coaches had performed any services that were that were payable that's why that part came on you know whether we pay them or not the second part is once they've performed it and we have proof they've performed it we are we are held accountable okay um, Russ I'll get back to you in one minute because I just want to clarify something Everybody's got a list of spring hires in front of them with four names on it, right? Okay. Um, Tony, did are these four names? Did these four did these four people all do some coaching this year already? For spring. You're muted. Okay, so um, the, the four that are on there, okay, um, three, uh, I'm trying to find it here. Yeah, you don't have it, Tony, because I, um, it's what we talked about. You got Dylan, you got Jake, Tyler, and Michael. Yep. So um, those had uh performed um the the two track were um the week of um hires 
because of, of the lack of, of people applying for those. Um, Dylan had coached last year and, and um, he was preparing for that junior high season and just doing what he could to help out with the baseball season because that's what he loves to do. Um, and, and Tyler was the, the, has been the head coach for trap for, for a couple of years already. So he's, he was already doing preparation and doing that work. So the answer is yes, these four people have worked for the school district in right. coaching for the spring. Yep. Okay. Now I'll, I'll yield to you, Russ, if you have something you want to add. Nope. I think I got it answered. Ellie, you got something? I do. So when we look at the sheet with the or the sheet that Tony had come up with and went through the logs and the duties and his recommendation, at this point, I I mean, is that what we go by or can we still say something different? Um, I have a question. This is directed towards Director Gerard. Director Gerard, I wasn't at the last meeting you chaired it, but you voted no on these hires. So I imagine if we're going to do something here that somebody that voted no has to has to change that. That's correct, yes. Let's let's have some discussion on whether that should be done. Okay. Um, like I said all along, I want to be fair to the coaches, and I want to pay them for the work they did. Um, we didn't know about these logs. We're not able to see the logs, but Tony assured us they they have the logs, and uh, they did work for the school. So I don't have a problem with paying them if they work. What was presented to us was we were going to hire these people after the season was already canceled, which didn't make any sense at all. So um, with the new information, yeah, of course, I want to pay people that worked. Um, we're going to just have to take Tony's word that this person came up with 65 or 75 percent of the season, even though the season itself is 50 percent on their chart of the work. Um, you know, but but yeah, I think uh, the whole thing, as far as voting to not hire people for a season that was already canceled, could have been avoided if we were well ahead of the game and being presented this list say in, you know, like January or February, um, get those things. And this is sort of a, a problem that reoccurs quite often here is last minute, um, yeah, you got the job, I just got to get it past the board. And then the board has questions. Um, better off to, to look ahead and get that stuff done early so that when it's presented to the board, the person's not already thinking they have a job and it's a done deal. Otherwise, um, you shouldn't even present it to the board. You don't want the board to, you know, if you just want somebody to rubber stamp it, you could get somebody to just rubber stamp yeah. the hires, you know. Director Garrett, do you have something? Yes, well, this was presented to us either in March or in, I believe in March, these were presented to us, right? And we moved it into April, which then moved it into May. So I think we should just keep that in mind as well. I, I believe it was my, I believe on our March meeting, it was my advisement to the board that with not knowing what was going on, that we should pulled off on it. So we probably could have had them hired then. Um, I'm in the interest. Oh, John, did you have something to add? Um, yeah, I just, oh, go ahead, John. Go, no, go ahead, Don. Sorry, John, Don, so close. <laughs> um, what I did want to say is with that, um, I think at last month's board meeting, the last regular board meeting, 
Um, I don't, I think it was under the premise that we didn't know that the, that, you know, I had no idea or clue that these people, you know, were working. Um, you know, I guess I should have been in more contact with Tony. I, maybe it wouldn't have come, you know, to this. So I do, on my behalf, apologize to the board for it coming to this. But in lieu of everything, I agree with Noel. They have they have log time. So at some point, the board needs to decide what percentage or what they want to pay these um, coaches. And I think there was a recommendation. John, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, it's certainly that's what I've said before. You know, it's just like everything else. We, I propose things for you. Um, that's what our team did. We propose things for you. And you had an excellent discussion on it, uh, whether to pay them. It's up to you what you propose to prepay them, uh, or not propose, what you vote to pay them. If you see their online stuff, um, properly, and that was my whole point before, with the logs, that's how Tony looked at it. His part of his job is to advocate for his coaches, obviously. Um, as for these people being up, you said it already, that was way back in March. Uh, it was postponed, I believe, three times before you voted, and originally it was brought up before, but the reason their names aren't on there it's not because Tony is lax in going out and looking for people. He was looking for people before the first of the year. These are people that some of them he had to talk into working. Uh, there's one person on this list that works three seasons for us. He got married this past year. I, my guess is he didn't plan on coaching. And he actually uh, came in and helped for a while. There's another one on there, had other things planned. And Tony talked him into it. He said, really, we need this coach. We have to have it. And that person is on this list also. Okay. Two examples. Uh, Director Garrett, did you have something you wanted to add? Can I make a motion? Um, you sure can. I make a motion to accept the recommendation that um, Tony and Superintendent Phelps and Don have made to the board. I'll second that. Um, are we in order here? I don't think so. I'm not going to accept that because I don't think we're in order. Um, what I need is somebody that voted no on them hiring oh. to to vote to ch re to readdress that vote. And I don't know who voted no. Randy, I'll make a motion to readdress that. I'll second it. All right. It was moved by Director Holmes and seconded by Director Gerard, Gerard to reconsider. reconsider last week's vote on spring hires of Dylan Comet, Jake Andrews, Tyler Lenz, and Michael Marshall. Is there any discussion on this? I'd like it to just be known that we're reconsidering it based on the new information that they actually had performed duties prior to being approved by the board. Yep. And I, I urge everybody, directors, administration, and public to understand the limitations of, of conversation and the flow of information limitation that has been through this whole COVID-19 thing. Um, we're definitely in uncharted territory, so some mistakes will be made. So is there any other discussion? All right, I'll read the motion. It was moved by Director Holm and seconded by Director Gerard to reconsider the hiring of Dylan Cummins, Jake Andrews, Tyler Lenz, and Michael Marshall. We'll do this by roll call vote. If you vote 
yes for it. You'll say yes or aye if you vote against it. You'll say nay or no. Director Hackett, yes. Director Holm. Yes. Director Garrett's. Yes. Director Director Lang. Yes. Director Gerard. Yes. And Director Petron. Aye. Let the record reflect that the motion passes six zero zero. All right. Then we're going to move on to the next one, which is spring salaries. What we have is, oh, go ahead, Allie. Oh, I was just, I think, Russ, Russ, on yours that you were showing, was it the one like that was 75% recommendation? Or are you looking at the head coach, head assistant, JVC squad? I was looking at the one with JV softball, the breakdown with the hours, and then the 75%, and 50% for the assistant coach, and then junior high softball, 35, um, varsity baseball, 70, assistant coach, 45, and then the backside too, with trap shooting and track and field. Okay, question, Randy, or actually maybe Tony. Um, so on the recommendation, you have head coach at 75. I'm just using um, varsity and JV softball, for instance, on the one Russ was looking at. And then this head coach, which I'm not sure where this one came from, but it says like preseason, postseason duties is 40%, seasonal duties is 50, and then administrative duties is 10. So on the the recommendation, you have seventy five. Lost her. Ellie, if you can hear me, you're locked up right now. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, you're back live, Ellie. Sorry, I was frozen. <laughs> okay, so my question was, on the, the one Russ was looking at, the varsity JV, Tony, it says, you know, that you're recommending like a 75% pay for them. But on the other one, like Noel was say, saying, the preseason, postseason, and the administrative duties equal 50%. In the season 50s on the recommendation, the extra 25%, what are, like, what are we looking at for that? So what, what they've missed would be, um, would be the games. That would be, that would be the biggest, the biggest chunk out of there. I, I, on my breakdown for, for a head coach, I attributed about 95% of the stuff they did for preseason and postseason was completed. So of that 40%, they did about 95% of that. Um, for the seasonal duties, I'd say about 40% is what, what they were able to accomplish. Now, the bulk of that is those games that they didn't get um, and then some of those practices. The administrative duties, I'd say about 80% of that category uh, is able to be completed. <clears throat> um, a lot of that stuff you know, like schedule and fundraising and coaches clipboard and professional development, those are forms, physicals, and fees. Those are all stuff that um, they had to get in order before before they were the practice. So I said about eighty percent of that. Okay, so like this this preseason, postseason, seasonal. I mean, some of these are all added together. This is just a general idea of what it is. Yeah, I, I just broke it down by what what where where most of their duties and time lies. Yep. Thank you. Did anybody else have any questions on? On this, I guess I guess I had one, and I'm Tony. Maybe you can address this, but is there a chance of getting in a title violation by 
paying them different amounts if some are men and some are women and um i don't believe so because we are paying um our females yeah. more than males because okay. if, if, you, if you take a look at the recommendation for varsity baseball they're at 70 and 45 percent so they have they have less um uh, same thing with with junior highs we have 35 percent for um for junior high softball and, and 30 percent for junior high baseball i just i just want to make sure that you're pretty sure that this that your math will add up to so that we won't end up in a title violation yeah no um okay no. Nope, I don't think so. Did you have something to add? Yeah, I was uh, I was looking at the assistant coach columns for the same two sheet, and preseason, postseason duties is seven percent, and administrative duties is three percent. So you've got ten right there. Say they did all of those. And uh, I'm looking at assistant coaches in a range of like 50%, 45%. Um, and keep in mind, there was no season. But as far as uh, lineups, instruction techniques, injury assessment, set up and tear down of equipment daily, uh, practice planning, supervision, bus, um locker room practice games none of that happened um assistant play calling and strategy none of that happened so where do you get that other 40 percent for an assistant coach i was i was looking at um they still did, they still did that distance coaching those coaches were still actively involved in it wasn't just the head coach posting things it was the assistant coaches actively involved in um, in in maintain, maintaining contact with those uh, with those players, the setup and tear down the, those stuff that stuff was out, and then it had to get uh, put away. And then it, when it was canceled, they had to put it in storage. Um, they were still practice planning. Um, that's where I attributed that. Okay, Director Garrett, do you have something? Well, I think we have to remember too that to Tony's point is there's still from the every direction from the Minnesota High School League was to continue to keep these coaches on, right? So uh, I just think that we, I don't know, I, to, to, to look at purely by the duties, I, I don't think is necessarily fair either because it wasn't up to them not to. You know, maybe if we'd had different guidance and all that, we would have handled, right? I'm sure Tony would have handled it differently, right? Or everybody probably would have. But I just think the way that they said to keep them on, keep distance learning, I think some of that we have to attribute onto this as well, not purely just look at the seasonal duties. That's my opinion. Yeah, I would agree with you. And that's why I asked if there was there was anything that came down from the state as what we should do because they're the ones that told them to keep on coaching. And then here you guys figured out now it's local control, right? Right. Mark, that would have been too helpful. <laughs> go ahead, Mark. I agree that they should be paid something since they were. Can we, can we do something like 50% of recommendation or something like that? Or are we stuck at having to make a motion on the recommendation? I'll go back. You can make any motion you want. Um, all we did was feed you the information and suggestions based on Tony was a huge part, but Don and I, we all talked about it. That's what we finished up and got that piece for you today. But that's entirely up to you as a board, what percent you want to get. Um, this is Noel. I've, Go ahead, Noel. We've already got a, a motion and a second. So if you want to propose something different, propose it as an amendment to that motion. That'll keep us straight. 
I didn't think we had a motion on this one yet. Did we? Yeah, I was moved by Rob. Point of order. I think you did. I don't think he accepted it. Oh, the chair did not accept. Yeah, we did that. He he moved it before before we oh. hired them coaches. So okay, Good so enough. I'm still looking for a motion out there. Okay. Randy, this is Russell. I will go back and make, uh, I'll do my motion again, just to accept what um, the athletic director and the superintendent and Don, the business manager, recommend paying the coaches. I'll second. All right. It was moved by Director Garrods and seconded by Director Lang to approve the spring salaries, sheet pay that we all have in front of us. That's what you moved, right, Russ? All right. Correct. Any discussion? Russ, go ahead, Noel. Uh, Noel, you're muted. There, there you go. go. Um, yeah, absent any data, um, we just, you know, we have to pay them because they worked. Um, and we just have to go with Tony's opinion, even though it seems kind of, it doesn't make a lot of sense as far as if you look at the, the stuff we did get, you know, the 7% preseason and 3% administrative. And then you look down and it's 50% pay. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I guess if we had the uh, all the data, you know, then we could look at it ourselves and make a reasonable um, amendment to that motion. But absent that, we got nothing to go on but what was recommended. We don't have any other information. Thank you. Mr. Director King, do you have something that you wanted to add? Mr. Chair. Yes. The reason we hire an AD is to do this very work so that we don't have to try to do that. He knows what his people do. He knows their value, and I really trust his judgment. I think he's being very fair and very honest, and I think we need as a board to support that gentleman and our administration. Thank you. All right, is there any other discussion on the motion in front of us? It was moved by Director Garrett and seconded by Director Lang to approve the spring salaries, which is explained by this sheet that we all have in front of us. It's the administration's recommendations. Voting aye or yes will be to approve. Director Hackett, aye. Director Holm. Aye. Director Garrods. Aye. Director Lang. Aye. Director Gerard. Aye. Director Petron. Nay. Let the record reflect the motion carries five one zero. Upcoming meeting schedule. Tuesday, June 9th, we have a policy meeting at 8.30 in the morning. And Monday, June 22nd, there will be a regular board meeting. Director Phelps. Uh, Director. Um, Mr. Superintendent Phelps. Phelps. Uh, I just wanted to there say before we finish tonight, my apologies for putting David's uh, up there today. Noel was absolutely right. It has to be a three-day notice, and it was not a three-day notice. And that's where the complication came in. 
in trying to redirect the voting tonight. You know, putting his one in there, and I got that. But there, were, if you notice on the original one, there are a whole bunch. That's what happens when multiple people put together a board. Okay. Any other meetings anybody wants to put on the schedule? If not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. I'll second. <laughs> it was moved by Director Garrett and seconded by Director Gerard to adjourn the meeting at 8.46 p.m. You will move I or yes to adjourn the meeting or no or nay to not adjourn. Director Hackett, aye. Director Holm. Director Holm. Aye. Director Garrett. Aye. Director Lang. Aye. Director Gerard. Aye. Director Petron. Aye. Motion carried, 600, meeting adjourned. Thank you.